The MCAT Podcast, session number 91. A collaboration between the medical school headquarters and Next Step Test Prep, the MCAT Podcast is here to make sure you have the information you need to succeed on your MCAT test day. We all know that the MCAT is one of the biggest hurdles you'll face as a pre-med, and we're here to give you the motivation and information that you need to know to help you get the score you deserve so you can one day call yourself a physician. Welcome to the MCAT Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week. I also host the Pre-Med Year Specialty Stories Old Pre-Meds Podcast and Ask Dr. Gray Pre-Med Q&A all can be found at mededmedia.com. That's M-E-D-E-D Media. Dot com. Today we have a great podcast. We're continuing from two weeks ago, our physics series, this time all about light. But before we dive into light, I want to let you know that the Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the MCAT is going to be available very, very soon. I just got the cover approved. I got the internal layout approved. And so we're going to be putting it up on Amazon and everywhere else where we can get it as soon as possible. So go to mcatbook.com. Sign up to be notified if it's not already out. If it is out, you'll be taken to a page where you can learn where to sign up for that book. Now, the the pre-med playbook guide to the MCAT is next in line in a series of books that I've written. Uh, This one obviously written with Next Step Test Prep. The other ones I've written by myself, the pre-med playbook guide to the medical school interview, and one that is coming out in August of 2018, pre-med playbook guide to the medical school personal statement. So check all of those books out. And again, sign up to be notified when the MCAT book comes out by going to mcatbook.com. All right, let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. All right, Brian, after a a brief break last week to talk about content versus test skill and knowledge for students who aren't scoring where they want, let's get back into it with more physics questions. Again, if you want to follow along with us, go to the mcatpodcast.com to download our show notes. This one will be session 91. So question seven, here's yellow light has a wavelength of 570 nanometers. Which of the following has a higher frequency than yellow light? A, orange light, B, infrared light, C, x-rays, or D, radio waves? A higher frequency. I don't know. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, after after all of the um, unpleasantness with springs and then struggling around with buoyancy, I thought we would take it a little light this time. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so higher frequency uh, for the MCAT, you definitely need to know the electromagnetic spectrum right? with radio waves way down on one end, really low frequency, really low energy. Uh, And then microwaves, just above that, relatively low energy. Uh, Infrared, right, it's obviously low energy, low frequency. And then Roy-G-Biv, it goes through the uh, visible spectrum uh, and then goes up to X-rays, which are very high frequency, high energy, all the way up to like gamma rays, very high energy, very high frequency. Um, So you should recognize these terms and generally where they fall uh, on the electromagnetic spectrum. So in this case... Um, X-rays, high frequency, high energy. So that would have a higher frequency than yellow light for sure. When you're working through this and you have a, a brain fart or whatever, your memory lapses for a second, is there any way to to deduce this? Because, oh, infrared, and you, you think about some of the facts about infrared and go, okay, that's lower, higher, blah, blah, blah. How do you, is there a way to figure that out or is there something just you have to know? Um... Yeah, you just kind of have to know it. But, I, I mean, infra, you could think of as, as kind of lower, uh, so lower energy than red, as opposed to ultraviolet. Ultra, ultra is more or higher. So violet's on one end of the spectrum, really high energy. And if you keep going, you get to ultraviolet. And then if you go the other way, red is really low energy. And if you go even below that, you get infrared. Uh, even further down so that you can i always think of the word ultra as kind of a little bit of mnemonic there if you forget the visible spectrum which side is considered high energy high frequency and which side is considered low energy low frequency okay question number nine which of the following colors of light will bend the least when moving from a vacuum to a glass prism blue 
red, green, or yellow light? Well, bend the least. Mm -hmm. So obviously, wavelength's going to play a part of this. Mm -hmm. Um, And the question is, is it a longer wavelength or a shorter wavelength that will bend the least? Um, Mm -hmm. That would be the first question to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how would you figure that out? So this is another thing you just have to know. Right. Um, And if you're a visual learner, you can have the kind of classic picture in your head of the prism and light going through the prism and getting bent that they always have. You know, they they have a picture of like Sir Isaac Newton holding the prism. Um, So if you can remember what that looks like, that might help. Um, I I often remember this as, um, you know, having been one of those kids who grew up, you know, Bill Nye, the science guy watching a lot of science uh, science museum type fun science, all, all the stuff that nerdy kids were into. That was totally my jam. <laughs> and so it's one of those classic questions. Why is the sky blue? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just b- basic stuff about how the world works. Why, right. Why is the sky blue? Um, and the answer is because blue light uh, scatters the most or, or bends the most when going through from one medium to the next. So when sunlight is just kind of cruising along through the earth's atmosphere, the blue gets gets bent or scattered the most. So if you're standing down on Earth looking up, it's mostly blue light, which is getting bent down towards the Earth. Hmm. Uh, so blue light bends the most, or, or really violet light bends the most. Um, and then, then you just, logically then, if you follow that, if blue is on one end of the extreme and it scatters the most or bends the most, then right, red would bend the least. Okay. That'd be really cool if our sky was red. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it, like, you would just take that for granted too, right? You wouldn't yeah. even notice. You wouldn't. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Yep. Yeah. Well, like you think of a, a a sunset, right? You look at a sunset and the whole horizon is red, and you don't. You just kind of take it as like, yep. Oh, yep. That's how the world works. Yeah. What, so why why does the sky change color when a sun sets? How does that affect right. light? Well, because now you're looking right at the sun, right? Or, I mean, you shouldn't be looking right at the sun, <laughs> but you should be looking right next to it for a pretty sunset. Mm-hmm. So it's still the same phenomenon, that blue light is getting scattered. So it's it's just a difference of, like, where are you looking, right? When the sun is it, it just daytime and you're looking at some random point in the sky, essentially what you're getting is the blue photons getting scattered down to Earth. When you're looking right at the sun, the blue light coming out of the sun is getting scattered away from your eyeballs. And so what's left is the red. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Now, that's something you can go when you have your, your date for a, a sunset trip, road trip. You can <laughs> nerd up your, your boyfriend or girlfriend about, with that knowledge. Yeah. And then it's, and then, so then the question, why is the ocean blue? Uh, well, it's not. It just reflects the sky. Oh, interesting question. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. That's, it, that's like, well, let's, let's continue this discussion because I, I think it's all valid. So one of my favorite uh, like trivia questions is what what color is a polar bear's fur? Right? Mm-hmm. And everybody says, oh, it's white. Like, no, it's clear. It's clear, yeah. Why, how does that light reflection work there? Do you know? Right. So, I mean, I, I would assume it's just transmitting or bending the entire spectrum, right? Because it's clear it's not... Um, It's not scattering one wavelength preferentially over another. Or if blue light is getting bent more, because the hairs don't, you know, it's it's big and it's fluffy and the hairs point all random directions, Mm -hmm. you're ultimately getting all of the various wavelengths of light coming out of the fur. Okay. So so all the wavelengths kind of mush back together into white when it hits your eye. Okay. Right? Because if you... Yeah, yeah. what you see is white. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Who knew we'd go talk about polar bears today? <laughs> yep. Uh, question 11. Which changes are experienced by visible light as it moves from medium one with an N? What's N here? Um, index of refraction. Oh, index of refraction. So an N of 1.16 to medium two, which has an index of refraction or an N of 1.68. So it's going from a lower medium of our index of refraction to a higher index of refraction. So the answer choice is A, wavelength remains constant while frequency decreases, wavelength decreases, 
while frequency remains constant, C, wavelength decreases while frequency increases, or D, wavelength increases while frequency decreases. So the changes from visible uh, changes of visible light as it moves from one medium to another. So without again knowing anything about physics anymore, the one thing that just pops into my head if if wavelength is changing, wouldn't that change the color? Or no? so we we perceive, um, we perceive color as a function of frequency. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the same way that we perceive pitch okay. as a function of frequency, it's often written as wavelength in the charts if you assume speed of light in a vacuum, right? So if you're in a vacuum, frequency and wavelength are, are inversely related, and so you can one can swap out for the other. But when you move from an optically less dense medium at 1.16 to a more dense medium, 1.68, the light actually slows down. Mm -hmm. um, they've actually made m media that are so optically dense um, that you can jog faster than the light, right? You send a pulse of light into this, uh, I think it was at MIT, you know, send a pulse of light into this special column that they make, and you can actually outrun the light beam. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm faster than light. There I'm a go. superhero. Okay, yep. so light is going to slow down. Mm-hmm. And so the question is, is, is that a wavelength or frequency? Mm -hmm. so yeah, that, and you, you really just got to walk in knowing this. Yeah, so how, what would you... Yeah, so the thing to remember is frequency is constant. Right? When you go from one medium to the next medium to the next, frequency is constant for any wave, right? Sound wave, light wave, uh, anything at all. Because frequency, it, it, the way it's often described is frequency is a property of the source. So if you are shining a, a blue light, then the construction of that flashlight that gives out a certain frequency of light, um, that's going to set the frequency as soon as it emits the photon. Okay. Or if you play a note on a piano... That string has a certain length, and so it vibrates at a certain frequency. Yeah. Then that sound wave now has that frequency. It doesn't matter if you're in the room and listening to the frequency through the air or um, standing outside the room, pressing your ear up against a door, trying to eavesdrop on the physics experiment yeah. and hearing the sound wave through the wood of the door. doesn't matter. Frequency is a constant. And, that, and that's where I was going with that. my initial thoughts of, well, the, the, the color – isn't going to change, right? Because that's from the source. And so the question, mm -hmm. if the color's not going to change, is that frequency or wavelength? So that would be frequency, which is what you answered earlier. Mm -hmm. So yeah. frequency, aka color, is going to remain constant. Mm -hmm. um, so that would really only leave us answer choice B. Yep. Wavelength decreases, go. frequency remains constant. Right. If you're slowing down, then wavelength also has to go down because um, speed equals frequency times wavelength. So uh, it's got to be B. Yep. All right. So that's maybe a, a different way to think about it as what popped into my mind initially is like the color is not going to change. Like nothing is going to change the color from blue to red. So mm -hmm. frequency is going to remain constant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Next week, we'll do some more physics for you. All right, so there you have it, physics and light. Now we know why the sky is blue. And if it was red, we wouldn't think that was weird either. I hope this was helpful for you, help you helped you with your light issues uh, with the MCATs, learning some, some more information about light and physics. I hope you catch us next week for our fourth in our physics series, which is obviously going to be amazing. Hope you have a great week. See you next time. Don't forget to check out the book, The Pre-Med Playbook, Guide to the MCAT, mcatbook.com.